Hey guys, Level Who here with some supplemental material to my Chopper series. This is just some pub footage that I'm going to narrate what I'm doing and seeing. Hopefully you'll be able to get something out of it. I believe I end up going 20 and 4 and my gunner goes 66 and 3. And more importantly, we end up winning the round. I believe we actually only died in the helicopter twice. Now, the other deaths were prior to us getting in it. Part of this is that we had two other level teammates in our squad, but a lot of it just comes from putting yourself in the best situations to be successful. So let's get started. Here you see I'm lining up the mobile AA in between the bottom part of the fixed crosshair and then halfway in between the floating eye bar like I had mentioned earlier. I'm constantly checking the mini-map to see what threats are. This particular tank you see me doing a circle. As I circle I have my back focused, or rather as I'm focused on the tank and my back is facing the enemy main, I'm always checking the mini-map to see what kind of things are incoming. I see a, J, a, rather a jet incoming. I dodge and evade. We start to get a lock. And then I pull out and back around this mountain. Now I know I have only friendly flags to my back, so it's pretty safe to use this rock as cover so while I wait for my ECM to reload. <laughs> so, uh, poor guy. <laughs> Again, as I shoot this infantry, make sure to keep them halfway I'm in between the fixed crosshair and the eye bar. I get another lock, and I can retreat back to this location. Yeah, roughly. A jet's incoming, so I make myself as flat as possible in case he's coming high. I can only oh, see that he's inbound. Him. Fortunately, he wasn't very good, That's and I had jet coverage anyway, and he just kind of flies off. There's all kinds of guys on the Now the helicopter is overhead. Again, I try to make myself as flat as possible. One other tip that you can actually do is use the chase camera or the third person camera when you're hovered behind objects like that. It allows you to see up and over just like in a third person shooter. This comes in handy particularly for something like the Little Bird where on a Marquez monolith kind of map you can go into that third person view and see over an obstacle while you still remain safe. I like to wait usually until the lock or rather the missile has already been shot before I kick my ECM as long as I'm flying low. Generally speaking if you're low and you kick your ECM the missile will swirl around and, and hit a rock or something like that. Now if you're high it's a little bit different you're gonna have to uh, stay still basically in order for the missile not to hit you and there's some timing things that I'll cover in some of the more dedicated how-to videos but when you're low, a lot of times I wait for it to kick. This gives me a little bit of an advantage because if it's a long tone, I know the odds are more likely that it's going to be an ECM, whereas if it were a short tone, I can pretty much tell immediately that it's going to be a stinger or something like that. Bravo's covered. Something's coming out of their mind too. I see that chopper incoming on the mini-map. And that's why I lifted up for the team so before it was spotted. Whenever a vehicle shoots on the mini-map, this includes pods, TV missiles, anything like that. Uh, whenever a vehicle shoots, he's going to blink on the mini-map for just a second. The same is true for infantry with stingers. Now, in this particular case, uh, there's lots of stingers going on. It's, it's very difficult to pinpoint where they are, but... Uh, you can actually yeah, find a, the stinger guy that's shooting at you because he'll be the guy that blinks for just a second right as you hear the missile yeah, indicator tone. He's actually <laughs> like I get locked. Again, I know I've got a safe area to retreat. If, for example, Delta and Charlie were capped, I'd probably be playing around Alpha trying to support to be able to push into Charlie. If you, if you have Charlie but not Delta, you can still use that rock I was using earlier for cover because most of the infantry is on top and they don't have a good visual angle on you. I would say on this map from the US side, it's most important to have Alpha. If you don't have Alpha, that's the thing you need to focus on. Once you have Alpha, then you can start to move into Charlie. Interestingly, Bravo is actually very difficult to capture until you have Delta because it's very exposed. There's not a lot of cover. Alpha's got a lot of rocks that you can hide behind. A lot of this just comes down to repetition, knowing where that rock is, knowing what I can use for cover. Again, the chopper's inbound. Now, Bill had already killed this one, so I didn't have to worry about him too much. That it, dude. I do not know how to hit those guys. 
One thing that a lot of people seem to do when they get locked is just keep running back. That's usually not the best tactic. It's best if you can get a general idea of where the lock is coming from and then hide behind some sort of an object to keep cover. A lot of people keep on running and end up running back into the enemy's lock range. If you kind of stop, settle down, find maybe a ditch to hide in, find uh, some rocks or trees or something like that to hide in, a lot of times you're more successful than just continuing to run all the way. Now you can outrun missiles from time to time, but generally if you can, cover is going to be your best option. Again, you see me here trying to hit that tank, keep him halfway in between the fixed crosshair and the eye bar. This particular jet uh, flew off. However, keep in mind when you're lining him up in the Viper for a TV missile, I would use that bottom part of the fixed crosshair as your guide. Now I did eat a missile here. I'm disabled. You see me kind of wiggle my tail. I don't know. Sometimes that seems to have more success in deflecting the missiles. There's some speculation that the ECM cloud helps. I thought that my gunner was had the extinguisher and that we'd extinguish and I'd take right back off. He did and he's I uh, may have fl been flying earlier. I get out, oh, or get in rather, get back out, get back in to quick start the chopper. Unfortunately, there was, a, I think, a keyboard error that prevented my gunner from getting back in immediately. One thing that I did once I did get hit, I didn't stop and land immediately. You've got a fair amount of time that you can actually keep flying once you've been disabled to get to safety. A lot of people tend to, to stop and wrench. Uh, but two things about the helicopter. The first is, again, you can keep flying for quite some time. The second thing, uh, in the Viper at least, you can hit the ground pretty heavily. You can really, really slam the ground pretty hard as long as you hit on the skids. Uh, the same is actually true for the Havoc. It's a little bit more difficult because the Havoc uh, has those wheels and you kind of skid from time to time. But as long as you're hitting those wheels, uh, you can hit pretty much as hard as you want without dying. Here I'm executing that circle of death. I don't have any ECM, so once I start to get locked, again, I hide behind these rocks here. I always want to make sure I've got a friendly flag to my back. That's partially why Alpha is so important. Likewise, when they cap Alpha deep in enemy territory, it's pretty easy to rack up kills. Now, earlier I was mentioning how you can line up a jet for a TV missile in the Viper and it's just below the bottom part of that fixed crosshair. You can do the same in the Havoc. It's considerably more difficult for two reasons. Number one, you obviously don't have near the vision that you have in the Viper. It's much easier to see up because you don't have that giant crossbar in your way. But secondly, the Viper's missile actually shoots considerably lower, uh, at least for the from the pilot's HUD, than the, uh, than the Viper does. The Havoc shoots lower than the Viper. The uh, yeah. Havoc seems to shoot, uh, you know, it depends on your resolution and screen size, but uh, it, it's almost halfway in between the, the gunner's view, which is that little uh, large rectangle with the small floating square inside of it. It's almost halfway, well, I take that back. It's halfway in between the text that says rocket and the fixed crosshair. It's, it's somewhere about in there. It's going to depend on your particular HUD, your particular resolution, but it is possible you just have to nose up more. And, and the same is true when you're hitting a tank. You've got to nose up considerably more when you're aiming for a tank. I see that jet incoming. He ends up turning, but initially I try to line him up. Uh, oh, using that crosshair as a guide. Now, if the jet is diving, you got to remember to lead because it takes time for your rocket to get there. Uh, yes, that was a TV missile that came in. Uh, you got to make sure to lead your gunner on those jets. You actually want to aim below them if they're diving. I believe Havoc hits this TV missile on the chopper, which is pretty good. If you have a gunner that can hit that missile, that's pretty important. Here we see me trying to hit a SOFLAM. SOFLAMs and CITV stations are exceptionally important to take down because javelins can be very deadly. Uh, if you do have a javelin after you, the best tip I can give you is to actually hover low at ground level and then ECM shortly before it arrives. The javelin will spin around you for a period of time and usually it tries to spin around you and it'll slam into the ground. Now if you're high up in the air and for whatever reason you haven't been able to get down, you can't get down for, for whatever circumstance, the only thing you can do is try to spot the javelin. Once you've spotted the javelin, you're going to want to ECM at the very last second. And if you do that, you might get lucky. Sometimes the javelin will spin around you 
uh, for enough time for it to to basically time out and just kind of you know disappear in midair. Here I saw that lock. I got down in that crevice rather than continuing to run. Now this tank, since he's going down the hill, he probably wouldn't have been able to keep locking me. But if I had kept running back towards that burned forest area, he probably would have reacquired the lock. Same thing here. I get down in this little ditch, try to create an angle on whatever's locking me, which I assume is a tank. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Yep, going for it. Well. I'm continuously checking the minimap. You can see on the minimap here that the helicopter is at their main. Well, it actually just shows up as a gray outline as an empty vehicle. Uh, and then once that disappears, I know that they have gotten in the chopper. I try to fly as much as possible using the uh, no, minimap awesome. and playing with the minimap large, because that's where you're going to be able to see the majority of your incoming threats. That tank round still shooting us. That jet <sighs> low. In fact, in a second here, I believe a jet comes down over top of me, but I don't immediately see it. I, don't know. I see a, another jet, but it's hard to see. I think yeah. like this jet here. Yeah, there's a jet incoming. Right, well, now, when go he goes down high down on me, uh, the best thing that you can do, which unfortunately, yeah, well, luckily for me, Billabong comes in and kills him. However, the best thing that you can do, actually, is to pitch your nose up and basically fly backwards with your nose in the air. I'd also recommend hitting your ECM if you can do it before the jet starts his dive. Jets, jet pilots, as you may or may not know, rely on their air radar heavily, especially very good jet pilots. They're going to rely on that air radar. And if you kick that ECM, it's going to hide you from air radar. Uh, and so what I'd recommend doing, if you can see that jet, you see him, he, you know he's going high, kick your ECM, and then uh, fly at a, at a, I guess it would be a 90 degree angle. Uh, so off to the right or to the left of the incoming jet. Again, still with your nose pitched up in the air. That's going to give your gunner the ability to shoot that jet. You've got uh, the gunner main cannon does about 11 damage per shot, and then, of course, the TV missile is a one-hit kill. If you're in the Viper, you're probably not going to be able to pitch your nose up high enough to be able to get that TV shot on the, the jet because of, of how high you have to pitch the nose up due to where the, the TV missile exits. I had a previous level up series about where the TV missile came from. You can but check you that out for some more details. But otherwise, guns are a pretty safe bet for whenever you're trying to take out a target. Like an uppercut? Is there something like, something like that? A lot of times if a jet is running ECM, it's best always to try to stagger your missile. Actually, hang on a second. I think... Uh, never mind. Uh, it's best to stagger your missiles. However, sometimes if a jet's running ECM, your only solution is really just to shoot them all because the jet's going to be flying out of range. Uh, if for whatever reason the, the jets may be spinning around uh, you, then you can start to stagger them. Um, I like I mentioned in, in one of these more dedicated videos, but... Uh, here well, you see that use of that third person that gives uh, a more much more clearer more view. More uh, in the like Havoc, the uh, it actually clears up your view quite a bit. You don't have some of the uh, glare that you have otherwise. I just need to, like, I'm starting now where if they're moving side to side, I'm not hitting my keyboard because it over overdoes it too much. Well, that about wraps this video up. Unfortunately, I believe I make a bonehead move here in just a minute and get ourselves killed. Felt kind of stupid afterwards. But, uh,. Thanks for watching, and if you've got any other questions, let me know. Oh. Ba bam bam ba dam bam.